Hello Game Makers, this is Game Maker Rob and today I'll be talking about how to make turn-based combat interesting. This will be mainly based on research that I've done as well as my own experiences and I'll be showing a couple of examples as I go. I'd like to add that I'm focusing on JRPGs and tactics games, but I'd imagine many points would work for other games too. However, instead of starting with the possible answers, let's ask ourselves why turn-based combat can be boring and why some people don't like it at all. Turn-based combat can be time-consuming, where everybody waits to take their turn. Um, guys, what are we doing? So the more actors you have, the longer everybody waits. And I definitely suffered from this when playing Tactics Ogre. It can be limited in scope where you use the same basic attack a lot or always the same spells versus certain opponents because it's literally the best thing to do which also makes it repetitive there can be no challenge so basic fights are usually there to drain resources or because that's what JRPGs do if you have hundreds or thousands of fights that aren't challenging or thought provoking that can be pretty boring bad AI where monsters heal themselves when it's not needed or their allies, casting sleep on enemies who are already asleep or known to be immune to it. Random encounters can be tedious and frustrating. For example, I like Final Fantasy VII, but the amount of random battles makes it a chore for me to get through. It also made exploring much harder for me on my first playthrough. And I say playthrough, but I've never actually completed the game, I think. Often there is little to no juice or polish in turn-based games. The menus are bland, regular animations or artwork, just basic sound effects, that kind of stuff. So those are all of the reasons I found why people dislike turn-based combat. And some people might say that some points are actually a plus. Waiting to take your turn can give you time to think and strategize, for example. But before I go into things that we can do to improve our games, let me show you an example of a bad game. Okay, so this is Labyrinth. It's a game I made a while ago with MV, probably a year year and a half ago, maybe more. Uh, I think I was still working on my RPG back then, so I didn't want to spend too much time on the project. I decided that two weeks would be enough to get everything done, but it ended up taking months to get to this point. Um, those months weren't as productive as the first two weeks because I was doing other stuff as well, but you know, um, they still took a lot, a lot longer than I thought it would and that I wanted it to. And it's not a finished game uh, at all. Um, I didn't want to have certain features because I knew it would lengthen the time to create it considerably. Maybe that was a bad idea, but again, I probably shouldn't have started the project in the first place if that was the case. Um, I thought we had some interesting ideas, but the combat was pretty basic and it's clear that almost everyone who played it was turned off by it. Uh, people would run. Uh, from battles as often as they could which I didn't even consider they would do um, I can only imagine they found the fights boring and, and that's bad because they're supposed to fight to earn material which is used for casting spells buying new spells and upgrading their gear um, and if you don't do that you're not gonna be strong enough to to beat the bosses <laughs> you're never gonna get past the first level probably um, the fact that the combat wasn't great is the main reason why this is a bad game because it's a combat focused game with a little bit of story. Uh, we did intend to have different stories play out for different characters 
uh, and different things happen, some kind of interaction between them, but um, I don't think we got them all implemented. Uh, let me just show you some of the combat now. Okay, so let's get into a combat. So my guy can't really do much right now. Um, he has a heal spell, but no material to use it. It's the MA in the bottom. Uh, you have to win fights or open treasure boxes to get material. Um, just to save time, I'm, I'm going to compare this battle system to uh, the list of reasons that people think turn-based battles are boring. So, is it time-consuming? Well, it is uh, ATB, but you're still waiting to do something while slimes are wailing on you. So, it is time-consuming in that way. Uh, limited in scope. You really can't do much when starting out. Uh, as you can see, you have to either win or find material to buy new spells. And even when you're maxed out with spells, it's basically akin to the battle system from Dragon Quest 1. Um, no challenge. I would argue that there is some challenge because it's really easy to die, but I don't think it's challenging in the way that Dwarf Fortress initially is. Uh, it takes quite a while to master Dwarf Fortress uh, because there's layers of difficulty and, and that's the kind of challenge that I prefer. Uh, bad AI, uh, the AI doesn't have to do much in this game. They just pretty much do like a basic attack. Um, I'm pretty sure I coded it so that they wouldn't keep casting sleep if you all were already asleep. Uh, but I can't be too sure about that though. It's been a while since I did this game. Uh, random encounters. So uh, I copied the radar in the top left from 7th Saga. So you can actually see the enemies and avoid them if you wish. Uh, there can be quite a lot of them though, because the game is designed around combat and exploration. And finally, little to no juice. Uh, it is a basic battle system with a basic menu and sound effects. Um, I just made the enemies wiggle when attacking and we had some animations for strikes and spells, but most of it, um, well, sorry, none of it uh, is like a wow factor. Um, I got, I got a couple of comments about uh, the sound effects being uh, cool. Um, I spent a bit of time making uh, some sound effects. So when you're going through the menus and stuff, uh, you got like a random sound effect from a set, which is, you know, it's kind of interesting, but it's, it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't make the game in the way that, you know, some sound effects and music tracks make a game. You know, like, I don't know, uh, people always say that the the story from Final Fantasy XIV is awesome, but um, I think the music makes that game, like, a hundred times better just because the music's so, so good. Anyway, uh, this is a bad game, basically. No one's going to see it. N no one who dislikes turn-based battles or turn-based combat is going to want to play this game, basically. That's my main point. Okay, so I've listed plenty of reasons why people don't like turn-based combat and why they might find it boring. I've also shredded one of my own games, but everything I've said was true, so hopefully I can keep this in mind for my own future games. But now it's time to hear how we can improve our battle systems, keep players engaged, and hopefully get them to enjoy the battles and the whole game as a result. Leading on from that last sentence, my first point is that battles can be more interesting if they have some connection to the overworld as well as the rest of the game. For example, if you're making a tactics game, can the player's position on the overworld be used to create the battle map? Maybe you have some enemy armies that move in real time and the player can use choke points like a bridge or river. Maybe the player's army will fight better because of the terrain that they fight on, like mountains or forests, etc. Then, in the battle, maybe certain tiles will give bonuses or penalties to units who are on them. Terrain being important isn't restricted to tactics games. In JRPG combat, 
actors' positions can change in a positive or negative way, or you could have constant effects that affect the whole fight, like spells costing more or less, bonuses to certain resistances, etc. In Final Fantasy VII, sometimes the heroes would be flanked or be flanking, but it was random, which takes away from the player. But in Chrono Trigger, the player can manipulate the fights into favourable or negative positioning, depending on what he was doing before the fight. My final point about the battlefield is that if you're able to make the environment interactive in some way, that can also make fights more interesting. By that, I mean there could be boulders to push from heights that might damage actors who get in their way, chairs to throw, or tables to be pushed to impede movement or turned on their side to block attacks. After the battle is won or lost, how about there being some effect on the overworld? If the player lost the fight, maybe a village is damaged or destroyed, which means they don't offer the same items as before. Maybe the player can restore the village in some way at a later date. In Luffia, once you'd killed all the enemies in a room, a door would often unlock, which gave the basic fights a little bit of meaning, although I believe much more can be done with this kind of thing. Maybe you can unlock craftable items after killing a certain amount of a creature, or you do more damage to them, or can even auto-resolve fights with that creature type as a reward. Although if skipping fights is a reward, does that mean that the fights aren't interesting? One thing that can make the battles players fight better is interesting choices. Let's take party composition. In Final Fantasy VII, we can choose our three party members, but what if there was some synergy between them and the party choice mattered a lot more than it does? In some games, you build rep with characters the more you use them, which unlocks stories and relationships. In other games, characters can gain special skills and abilities that only unlock after fighting with other heroes over time. This could also tie in with having synergy and combos between heroes, where skills become more powerful and more useful if used in a certain order and by certain heroes. Would having less battles with fewer enemies be better in your game? Less battles also means you can afford to make them more challenging. What if each area or encounter could teach the player something new about the game mechanics? What about instead of an army of units, you have between 6 to 12 total, from which you can field 3 to 4 per battle, and each of these characters are unique in some way. Instead of a huge story spanning a universe, would your game benefit from a shorter story, meaning less battles overall, and hopefully less repetition? It's a lot easier to have every enemy be unique if the playtime is measured in a few hours, rather than dozens or hundreds. What if the same enemies changed over the course of the dungeon, depending on how the player fights? Perhaps there could be some element of randomness to the enemies instead, where they don't always have the same hit points and skills, but draw from a potential pool based on the enemy type. One thing I enjoy aiming for in games is the secondary objectives. Make the rewards for completing these objectives something better than just bonus XP and gold though. We could have special items and spells. It could even be things that don't actually help in battle, but reward the player in other ways like new skins for their actors, side quests and new story elements, etc. The amount of juice you can have in your game is going to be limited based on your ability, pocket and time, but it's always a good idea to try and get as much juice into your games as possible. Great sound and music is as important as the visuals in my opinion, even better if the sound is a little interactive in some way. In Crusader Kings 2, notes from the main theme play every time you press a button while setting up a game for example. One main complaint for people is that turn-based battles take too long. They don't like to wait, 
So is it possible for the player to speed certain things up, like clicking during an animation will skip the animation and lead to faster turns? In many games you have the option for actors movement to be sped up considerably and for enemies to speed up or skip animations for example, meaning the time the player waits until they can do something is reduced considerably. If players are given time to think about what they're doing, let's give them something to think about, e.g. the timing of spells, which ones to use and when, which enemies to prioritise because of their different mechanics for example, maybe even the positioning of characters and when it might be a good idea to be in a certain place and when it's a good idea to move from that certain place. This isn't something I've really considered until recently, but how often do you find yourself just using the basic attack in games? I'd say quite a lot. My usual plan is to save MP and items, if I can get away with it, and just use the basic attack for all my characters. But that's exactly what can lead the fights to being stale and repetitive, and it is my choice to do that, but the game is set up in that way as well. What if each character's basic attack was actually different and unique to each other? They don't all have to do damage, for example. Maybe some have a basic buff, debuff, combo increaser, or get the enemy's attention to focus on them. I don't really have any great ideas on this, but it's something to mull over. Alright game makers, that's everything I have for you today. Hopefully I've given you some ideas that get your brain working. There are ways to make turn-based battles interesting and fun, but it comes at the cost of great design and actually being able to make it in the first place. So don't go beating yourself up if you're not able to make the perfect battle system right away. What did you think about my suggestions? Did I miss anything out? Let me know in the comments below.